please excuse the mess that is in the shelves. It is not only that time of the year where I talk about all of the books that I liked and didn't like, but I'm also dealing with a cat that likes to toss things off my shelves when he wants to talk at 2 a.m. Hey everyone, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be me talking about my top five book, my top five disappointing books of 2020. As we all know, I do have a lot of things to talk about and as per usual, I do have some honorable mentions. So uh, let's just jump right in because somehow I'm going to turn like five or six books into like a really talked about situation and this is going to be fun editing. So, yeah. So we're going to start off with number five, and this is going to be, like, least to most disappointing of the year. And that first book is Illustrado by Miguel Ciuco. This is an adult... I still don't know what this, what this qualifies under. Contemporary novel? Historical fiction novel, I suppose? Following Miguel going back to the Philippines after his mentor is found dead in the, in the Hudson River. He tries to figure out exactly what happened to his mentor and how he kind of can make sense of this death. I read this around like March or April during the height slash the beginning of quarantine time and I had been on a high. I had been on such a good reading high. All the books were for pretty much pretty good books with the exception of like one or two. But everything else was good and then I get to this book and I gave this book maybe like I think two or three stars. There was just a lot going on with this book and I tried to annotate it and I gave up. Most of my annotations involved me not liking something, having a lot of questions, not understanding the situation, and I just... I finished the book. I, I, I was just genuinely disappointed with this book. There was a lot going on and not in the best way. I couldn't really get a grasp on the character. It, he just seemed really pretentious to me. Sitting at number four of my top five is Vampires of Portlandia by Jason Tannemore. This was one of my highly anticipated, literally one of my few highly anticipated reads of 2020. I was super excited for this. It's about um, a swangs, but he twisted it to be a bit more, bit more vampiric in modern day Portland. If you guys don't know, Aswangs are part of the Filipino mythology, so again, super excited to have a Filipino author writing about Filipino characters and our mythology in more of a modern day America setting. I wouldn't say that this was kind of disappointing, but it was kind of disappointing. There were a lot of things going on, a lot of different plot points, and at first I thought it was all gonna come together, but then the ending didn't really do it for me, as well as the writing style. I, it was difficult to see if we were in close third person, or if we were in omniscient point of view, and it seems like I, I, like I literally figured it out at the end, or toward the end that it was omniscient, when the narrator quite literally cut in and said that he was interjecting and narrating. Like I said, the plot points were really weird and the ending really just kind of took it away from me. I felt like there was a better way to have ended that seer that book and that was not it. However, it will not deter me, yes, deter me from re continuing to read more of Jason Tannenmore's works. So there's room to grow in every scenario, but still, it was just like, I don't know what you're trying to do in this scenario and I just, yeah. Sitting at number three on this list is Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This, if you guys don't know, I applaud you because this was the talk of the town for a hot minute. But this is a YA dystopian novel following pre is, is it bleh, bleh. This is the prequel to the Hunger Games trilogy, the ever so loved Hunger Games trilogy following President Snow before he becomes President Snow. And I believe during the 10th Hunger Games, or the 12th. Somewhere in there. It's in the first decade. I kind of enjoyed this book. I thought it's interesting to kind of get more into President Snow's psyche and see kind of the experiences that shaped him and make, turned him into this dictator that we all love to hate. However, the biggest problem for me, and I think for everyone, was the pacing of this novel. It's a very slow novel, which is fine by me. It's very character driven. However, my issue is that the pacing just felt really incorrect and it just didn't line up with how I felt like the book should have gone. And then there was an instance of the love story which is typically fine by me, but then we get down to it and it didn't really feel all that developed 
and sometimes it was hard to really understand President Snow in terms of what his goals and values were or like what his ambitions were I should say by the end of it I felt like for the most of the most part of the book he was kind of just being tugged along and then later on he just kind of ends it with yes I'm going to become this power man kind of guy do I think it's a good book yes do I recommend it if you're a big fan of the Hunger Games you could probably read the Hunger Games and not read this book and not miss a single thing quite frankly and if you guys are looking to get into the Hunger Games, probably can just read the original trilogy and then not read this. But it's being turned into, I think, a movie, so I don't know how that'll go turn out, considering how kind of slow-paced and more in the character's head than the rest of the actual Hunger Games were. Like, we saw kind of, like, not really a flop. How difficult it was to get through the first Hunger Games movie because all of that was based in Katniss's head, so I don't know how this will translate onto the screen either. The next book is Ruin and Rising by Leigh Bardugo. This is the third and final installment of the original Shadow and Bone trilogy, or the original Grishaverse trilogy, I should say. So, you guys know that I was not the biggest fan of the original Shadow and Bone trilogy. There's just a lot of writing and character development problems that I had. However, I had hopes for the third book, primarily because it's the, it's the third book. You know, we see a lot of growth in writers, and typically that all comes to fruition in the third book of the series, or at least the finale of any series. Somehow, Lee Bardugo's prowess and her ability to write did not come into fruition until Six of Crows. While I can see a lot of her descriptions growing and whatnot, the characterization was just not it for me. I feel like there were a lot of scenarios that could have gone that would have changed the course of a lot of these characters' lives and have set them up for either a spin-off, a prequel, a continuation, or just a plain old happy ending that makes sense. And the ending for this particular character did not make sense. It was not a Veronica Roth divergent sustainable in this scenario, but this just didn't make sense. And even now I get some kind of anger for how this book ended. And that is all I can say without going on a rant. And the only reason why I don't want to go on a rant is because I'm saving the rant for this final book, which is number one on my most disappointed list, and that is Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This was my first buddy read with Sarah, which I feel like at this point Sarah and I have a history of just choosing books that we think are going to be great and then just don't end up great, but that's fine. We grow as people. Where to begin? So we read this over the course of two months, which isn't a bad thing. It's a pretty hefty book. I think it's like over 800 pages. The world building was just confusing to begin with. It's a pretty accessible high fan adult high fantasy, which is surprising, but the world building was just confusing. There was just a lot going on, and I feel like trying to tie them all together didn't make a lot of sense to me. As much as I am a fan of indexes and guides in the back of the book, I feel like if you're going to explain the situations on the page, it probably would be best if people could retain that information as they read the book and not necessarily need to flip back and forth to figure out who is what and where goes where and what does this mean and what does that mean. And then the ending. The ending was okay. It was a happy ending. Was it the ending that I would have liked considering the characters kind of situation? No. Was it the ending that I think that the book deserved? Could have been slightly better. It, it, I have a lot of words and somehow they're all just gone. But it, it's like good and it's accessible and it's wonderful but I feel like there were a lot of elements that were missing but a lot of elements that I feel like were unnecessary, if that makes sense. Moving on to my honorable mentions, I only have four and one of them is A Golden Fury by Samantha Coho. I DNF'd. 25% I believe. It was interesting and the concept is interesting. The writing was marvelous. However, I felt, I felt like personally the progress that the plot was going in was a little slow and kind of boing. Boing. So I DNF. The next one is from Darkest Seas whose name, uh, the author's name I'm kind of blanking on. 
So, Rosalind Chase. It's by Rosalind Chase. This is an adult romance erotica novel following a Kelpie. Yeah, I was really intrigued by it. It sounded like a kind of growing together from mourning scenario. However, it was more lusting after each other and mourning separately until about the end. And there were a lot of flashbacks and the fantastical element really didn't play a huge key role in the scenario and the couple, the main couple, the only reason why I picked up this novel did not end up together. And I was more intrigued by the flashbacks and the polyamorous relationship flashback portion than the actual relationship. So take that as you will. Another honorable mention is Shadow Frost by Coco Ma. This is a YA high fantasy story following this young princess who has the powers to save her world and just kind of, you know, has to grow into it. This was mine and Sarah's second buddy read and I DNF'd it about 30% of the way through. Now don't get me wrong, I think there's a lot to unpack with this book, there's a lot of possibilities with the series. However, there was just something about the world building that didn't really click right with my itty bitty brain. And to boot, I felt like the writing was just pretty juvenile. We had instances where it felt like the writer was trying to make it sound a bit more elevated, you know, a bit more like fantasy writing, not so much like with the, with the specific kind of language, but just kind of more elevated writing to show like, oh yeah, these guys are highly educated, they're royalty, you know, things kind of just make sense. And then they would switch to a more modern, more casual kind of dialogue and it would always just take me out and I just was not a fan. And it was just like, what is this? Why is this here? Are it like, yeah. There was just a bit of like the romance situation too where I was like, we knew right off the bat that they were going to be a romantic interest. They were literally described in more depth than the platonic friend, which doesn't make much sense to me because I feel like if you have a best friend, all you do is talk about how amazing and great and beautiful and handsome they are. But sure, let's talk about in great detail about how he's carved from ivory and then just mention how this your friend is like, she's great, she's always there for me. Not not obvious at all and then there was i'll talk more about it in my wrap up but there was i just don't like the idea of giving characters abuse background stories solely for the sake of you, the main character having more sympathy toward them and adding on to like the romantic intrigue i'm just like it's 2020 we can find other ways to make men interesting i know it's hard i know it's very difficult but it's there you just gotta think. And the last honorable mention is A Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. This is a Les Mis retelling. That, that's it. It was good. I read to the end, but there were so many different time skips that I felt like were unnecessary. And then to boot, to boot, it was weird. Like the progression of the story didn't really line up. And then there was a weird, like, the narrator knew exactly what was going on but then didn't disclose it to the reader until the big reveal happened which somehow just was too much for my brain i couldn't what's the word suspend my disbelief enough to really sit there and enjoy this novel so by the end i was like i ain't reading you i'm not reading the continuation this is what is this but the writing was really nice so it had that but that is it for my top five-ish ish, disappointing books of 2020. I know it's a little weird to kind of close 2020 out on a sour note, but it's fine because we're going to start 2021 out on a better note with my top 10 books of 2020. So if you guys have read any of these books and you guys agree, disagree, or if somehow my mini rants and like for these books have made you want to pick up said books please let me know in the comments below but until next time hit like subscribe comment and i'll talk to you guys everywhere else hope you guys are having a wonderful week bye